Thanks again for joining me. I'm Jackie, and for those of you who don't know me, and I am a Malaysian born, Sydney, Australia based former restaurant owner. So, what I do during this lockdown cooking series is that I show you um, how to cook Malaysian food that has been either tweaked or the recipes have been selected that make it very easy for you to be able to follow along even though you're under movement control orders or lockdowns whatever it is you call it in your part of the world so the what we're doing tonight is actually something called ayam per chick ayam just means chicken you've heard my previous broadcast where i explained a little bit about malay words but I think it's just right. But anyway, uh, I am Perchik. It wasn't something that I personally grew up eating, but I went to Kelantan, which is the northernmost state of the peninsula of Malaysia. It just borders Thailand. Uh, the food there is really quite unique. Kelantan, in fact, back in the olden days, used to be a protectorate of the Siamese kingdom, right? So the, the people are have a very close affinity to Thailand and its culture and the food similarly is reflective of that. So I was very very intrigued by Kalantani's food and one of the dishes that I was served was something called ayam perichik is a barbecued chicken dish but we're going to do it a little bit different and the ingredients aren't too hard but I'm going to actually assuming time allows us and assuming things don't go a lot wrong we didn't have a particularly good start today we are going to first of all i'm going to do it a little bit different when i had it in kelantan what they did was that they um they grilled the chicken on these uh, charcoal grills right and if you're if you're asian if you're malaysian especially if you're chinese malaysian you'll be familiar with these clay round stoves where they put charcoal in it and you kind of like use to cook your food on top of that right and they were grilling the chicken on these and the way they held the chicken pieces together were like using these uh, bamboo sticks okay so it's, you can imagine a bamboo stick that's kind of like has a slit in between and the chicken is kind of like clamped in between two of them and it just sits over these charcoal stoves and they grill them slowly and they baste the chicken as it's cooking right now we're not actually going to cook it raw from scratch which was how they did it back in Kelantan we're going to actually move things along a little bit and we're going to first pre-cook the chicken okay but on top of that and, and this is not something too unusual um, I want to also, like I said, assuming time allows it, assuming we don't go crazy over time, the, I, I want to actually show you, uh, if you so wish, I know some of you are very leery about frying chicken, I want to show you how you can do the same thing and turn it into chick a fried chicken, okay? So we're going to do barbecue chicken and we're going to do fried chicken. And now, uh, as far as the ingredients we want, you will have seen the ingredients list, but let's refresh your memory a little bit. We want, just very basically, we want two sets of rumpa okay rumpa like remember the malay word rumpa is like spice mix okay two sets of it and i've told you guys in my broadcast that once you've nailed the whole idea of malaysian spice mixes you will actually be able you will never go out and buy your own spice mix again okay my own included <laughs> people keep ordering my curry paste and i was like why can't you just make it yourself at home but all right anyway in so far as rumpa ingredients okay very typically, um, you want onion, garlic, and oftentimes ginger, right? Those are the key ingredients in a rumpa mix. But in its most basic form, onion and garlic. Most of the time, you would actually like, well, first of all, you'll blend it. You'll pound it with a you know mortar and pestle. We're going to go high tech here and use our food processor in a second. We um, So... Typically, you would blend it and then you'll fry it up. You'll either fry it up or you'll poach it with the meat that you're cooking, okay? Now, like I said, first of all, uh, we want two sets of rumpa. One set to marinate the chicken with, okay? And the other set we are going to actually use to make the sauce that we're going to baste the chicken with and then also serve the chicken with, okay? So uh, the two sets of rumpa. You did not see that. <laughs> Two sets of rumpa will consist of onion, garlic, ginger, and onion, garlic, and ginger again. Okay, so you got it. So if you've got this at home, start peeling your onion and your garlic and your, uh, or cutting up your ginger. And as far as chicken, I'm using chicken legs here because I'm cheap. Uh, there's two kilos of chicken legs. I've got about a kilo left here. It cost me seven bucks, but you know, when I had it in Kelantan, they actually used, typically you would use chicken pieces on the bone in Malaysia, right? So it's really only in Australia that, uh, well, 
outside of Malaysia that a lot of people don't cook with, uh, with meat on the bone. Okay, so we've got the two sets of onion, garlic and ginger. What we're going to do is we're blitzing all of it. Okay, let's, I don't probably need all that ginger. Now, I mentioned if you've been following my events and guys, this is so important. I, cause like I say, I, 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 you know, we're all very challenged <laughs> at people not being able to catch my broadcast or missing the events and all that sort of stuff. First of all, the first thing I do early in the week is I post, I create an event and say Friday, 4 PM Sydney time. This is when the broadcast is. If you don't know what the local, and unfortunately, you know, you think Facebook, you know, with all the brilliant magic it does would automatically translate it to local time for you. Apparently it doesn't. So go to world time server and check what the local time is in your part of the world. Okay. So onion, garlic, ginger, we're going to blitz this. Okay. Into a paste. And then you get the event and I try and invite some people, but Facebook is, Facebook is kind of like, I'm, Facebook's got me on their crosshairs because you know how in my previous broadcast, I keep saying to you guys, hey, just re comment recipe, please, and I'll send it out to you. So I've been diligently going around, uh, sending you uh, private messages and saying, hey, this is my recipe that you requested. And Facebook has been marking me as a spammer as a result. So it's getting harder and harder for me to contact you. Hence why, we're say sign up for cook along recipes and giveaways. Please guys, write down that link bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along, all one word and all lowercase, it is case incident and you will join my email list that is specifically tagged as um, people who are in for people who are interested in my cook along recipes okay you will get other content with me or just unsubscribe you, you can stick of it but anyway so this is my spice paste but yeah having so today say hello in the comments tell me where you're watching from tell me what you're up to tell me if you're attempting this but if you say recipe please you're not gonna get it anymore because I don't want to get in trouble with Facebook okay um, but so We've got this spice paste here. Now, like I said, we're splitting this in half eventually. But what I want to first do, and this is this is not typical of how they do this recipe. Okay, I just want to warn you, this is the, a Jack Yam iteration of this particular recipe. We're going to fry it up. Okay, so let's turn this on. And if you watch my other broadcast, you know how I tell you guys that my hack for making sure that you don't end up with like a stove a bench top full of like oil splatter is to fry it up without the oil first okay so we've got the onion which is very juicy um we've got the onion garlic and ginger mix here we're gonna fry it up until most of the moisture has evaporated then we're going to add the oil and you know why we're doing this the reason why we're doing this is kind of it's like a little bit of a domino effect typically like i said in malaysia you wouldn't actually fry this right you will smear the chicken with some of this and then the rest of it you will actually boil it with coconut milk okay so when you smear the chicken with this and then you put it on a charcoal grill and you grill it from scratch the the cooking process actually roasts the spice mix but we're not going to do that because we want to fast track this and we want to make sure because i know australians are a little bit leery about chicken that's undercooked and all that sort of stuff so i'm going to show you what we're doing here um effectively will show you a way to make sure you can roast chicken and you can fry chicken without worrying about the chicken being undercooked and that is that we're going to actually um let's just, <laughs> just i hope it's not someone messaging me and say that i've got technical problems please okay i don't see the link okay go to the dot com slash jackie m food m food okay sorry <laughs> i need a pa anyone wants to volunteer um okay so let's fry this up okay so you see the the the, the, the steam coming off from the pot okay now uh right so like i said typically you would actually smother this on the chicken along with some salt and then you would grill it from scratch okay but we are going to actually poach the chicken in with 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 the spice marinade okay remember we're splitting this half half of it is going to be poached with the chicken okay and after poaching we're then going to lightly grill it but we're not going to grill it from scratch okay you can um if you've got a barbecue or whatever you've got an oven roast or whatever uh 
um, you, you, what you can do is you can partially poach this. I'm going to turn this off, okay? Okay, so let's have a look. Jackie M's. Guys, can you please do me a favor? Like I said, share it out to your friends, especially your, your Asian friends who are trying to catch this. It might be a little bit uh, challenged to find me, okay? So my post is under facebook.com slash Jackie M Food and it's pinned to the top of the page. So if you just go to facebook.com slash Jackie M Food, you should see it, but apparently some people can't see it. So uh, <laughs> for the love of God, please help me along. I'm getting buzzed left, right and center of people not being able to find my broadcast. Um, okay, so we're going to fry this up. Um, now, so like I said, you can partially cook the chicken, right, and that will reduce your grilling time. Or you can cook the chicken all the way and just lightly toast it. So we're going to do the latter today, okay, partly because I, I, I'm actually just cooking it on this flat stove top. If you've got like a proper barbecue or whatever, you can spend a little bit more time cooking it. And also, I'm using this, okay? So I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna put the chicken all the way and I'm gonna just lightly grill it, give it some color. But um, if I were to only coat the chicken with like raw onion and whatever, so they can poach it like unfried up, it doesn't have that nice, um, you know, roasted flavor. So that's why I'm actually pre-frying it. And also, by the way, yeah, I lost my train of talk, thought earlier. I did post in the event um, the ingredients list, but then I also added a couple of extra ingredients after the fact as well. So hopefully you will have seen that. But the extra ingredients that we're adding to this are, uh, if you've got tamarind juice, perfect, uh, or lemon juice, lime juice, something uh, something sour, just to kind of add a little bit of flavor to this. And also lemongrass, if you've got lemongrass. If you don't have either, don't worry about it. I do find though, um, that the, uh, you know, you, you want like kind of a nice contrast of flavor in there, okay? So you're wanting like onion, garlic, ginger, those are the key, uh, key ingredients. You want some coconut milk, you want some sugar and salt, okay? That's the, and, and some chili if you want as well, okay? And if you caught my other previous broadcast, this here, you saw my last week's broadcast, right? Where I talked about chili paste and I had a little bit of a moan about laksa, Aussie style laksa that don't use the right chili paste. This is chili paste made from um, large chilies that have been boiled in hot water and then pureed essentially. Okay, so that's all it is. If you don't want spicy, leave it out. If you've only got bottled chili sauce, you can use that maybe, right? Maybe some sriracha or something like that. Um, and that's going in not the marinade, that's going in the sauce that we're going to use to baste the uh, chicken with, okay? And also serve the chicken with. So you see all the steam, like I said, if you put if you, all Malaysian recipes, and that's how I actually used to do it as well, because I got, I, I, I was raised like um, cooking things traditional, the traditional way, all the recipes will say, heat up some oil, add this in and then fry it up. Okay. And you can imagine, you can hear that sizzling, that's all the moisture in it. Okay. And usually it's got more moisture in it as well. Um, what you want to do is. What you want to do is fry it up like this, okay? Without the oil first, otherwise you'll just be spitting and just be a really unpleasant experience all around, okay? Let's just scrape this down, okay? And again, like I said, say hello and share this out to everyone who might be missing. Hey Shirley, good. I'm so glad you found this. Christy, my favorite chicken dish. Awesome, awesome. Where are you from again, Christy? Are you from Kelantan? And obviously, I don't think this is unique to Kelantan, but that's where I ate it, okay? And just a little bit more about Kelantan, like I said, it's up in the northernmost part of the peninsula of Malaysia. Malaysia is made up of two major land masses. There's the peninsula, which looks like it's sandwiched between Thailand up north and Singapore down south. And then there's Borneo, Malaysia, which is really, really fascinating. Uh, Borneo, Malaysia is made up of uh, the state uh, the states of uh, Sabah and Sarawak, okay? So... Kelantan is in the peninsula, up the top, right next to Thailand. Okay. Here 
Jaeger. <laughs> I, I, I'm just thinking through, like the people who keep contacting me who can't find my broadcast seem to, I, I see a pattern that they seem to be the same people. So guys, if you can't, you can't find my broadcast, right? Uh, let's get together on a Zoom call and I'll show you how to make sure you don't miss them again, okay? And I keep telling you, I created that sp uh, free Facebook group. It's called uh, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. That's free for everyone to join. You will always find the broadcast there, but apparently it's not really working. But uh, having said that about the broadcast, the recipes and giveaways, and I want to talk a little bit more about the giveaway again after this at the end of this you see this browning up okay let's add the oil now okay all right so the uh if you want the recipes uh i can no longer send it out to you via facebook private message <laughs> i have been sending it to my entire email list but i i'm guessing that not everyone on my email list actually catches my broadcast so i don't want to be spamming them with something they don't necessarily want to get so i've created a separate list like i said the link is there bit.ly slash jackie m cook along all one word all lowercase okay and if you sign up to that i will make sure you get a copy of this recipe when it's ready and typically it'll be like sometime early part of next week okay So we'll add some oil to this. We we're just gonna fry this. We're gonna roast this to bring out the flavor, okay? And like I say, if you're from Kelantan or if you um, you make ayam perchik on a regular basis, this is not typical of how you would do it, but I'm doing it this way for a, there is a method to my madness, okay? So don't, <laughs> don't hate me yet. <laughs> Okay, this is sounding perfect. Let's take half of it out. You know what? I'm going to use a different pan. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to take half of this out. The rest we're going to save for the sauce. Okay. And to this we're going to add some water. not that much because the chicken is going to produce juice okay we add some water and we're going to add you can add some salt i'm going to add some chicken powder okay because you know my fixation with chicken powder and throw in your chicken here and by the way I saw any satay pictures last week so if you attempt this at home send me the pictures I'd love to see them um, okay so chicken pieces and again I'm using chicken drumsticks you can use whatever you've got the bigger the pieces the longer you would probably want to saute look I'm going to you know what I'm just going to cut some slits on the chicken just to help it along in terms of cooking and help it to soak up the flavors okay typically you would actually want to marinate the chicken with the spice mix <clears throat> but because we're doing all this within the hour we don't have time for that so we're actually just trying to fast track everything and that's part of the reason why i'm simmering the chicken in the in the marinade as well okay it just helps it to soak up the flavors <clears throat> Just turn it down a little bit and just let it simmer, okay? And I'm just going to put a bit of salt in it as well. Okay. 
And just make sure you don't end up burning your pot. Okay, let's put a little bit of salt here. Thanks so much for sharing, Cindy. Hey, hey, Cindy, Shirley, hey. How's everyone? Asna, how are you? <laughs> Say hello, everyone. Let me know where you're watching from. Another option, if you want, is to steam this, okay? So you can coat this with the marinade and then steam the chicken. It'll take a little bit longer. We're boiling it, okay? We're totally fast-tracking this. Let's add a little bit more water to this. Okay, I'm just going to move this across to the other stove. And move this over here. Okay, what we're going to do with this so we're going to add a little bit of lemongrass if you have it. Nice. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm using lemongrass powder and I mentioned in my one of my previous broadcasts, lemongrass powder is quite strong and concentrated. If you use too much of it, it will make your food bitter. Okay, so just be very restrained in how, how you use it. I'm going to put a little bit of salt sugar okay and one thing about Kelantanese food I noticed is that all the Kelantanese dishes taste noticeably sweeter than your average uh, Malay dish from other parts of Malaysia okay and I'm guessing that's to do with the Thai influence I always tell people when people get uh, try to figure out the difference between Malaysian curries and Thai curries one of the noticeable differences is that Thais use a lot more sugar than we Malaysians okay so we've got the sugar we're gonna put some chili paste okay again chili paste is optional okay this is a very dark color it will produce a beautiful red hue but it actually is like very very mild okay hey Yvonne apa kabar? Evelyn hey Kuala Lumpur Lynn how are you from Penang Peggy yay good to see you <laughs> Toowoomba what's the weather like there gray and chilly oh yeah it's no different here all right so we've got the chili and we've got the chickens here remember we're just poaching this in the marinade typically like I said you would actually just marinate it and then grill it from a raw state uh, there are people who like I said in Malaysia who do partially boil it or partially steam it just to speed things along we're going to cook it all the way okay like I say so that there's no doubt whatsoever when you throw this under the grill or whatever that it's not cooked through properly okay we're not using a grill because my 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 oven is in my other kitchen so <laughs> we're actually just gonna pretend grill it <laughs> on this on this stove okay so let's do this okay and let's just cover it just to help it along okay so in the meantime like i said that's the other half of our spice mix which is the onion garlic and ginger that's been fried up so it, it produces more flavor i just want to cut open some coconut cream and if you've watched my previous broadcast you've heard me talk about using coconut milk powder in lieu of coconut cream today i'm going to go and use coconut cream okay and so it's got some sugar, it's got a, did I put salt in it already? Let's put a little bit of chicken powder. I probably did that already, I'm not sure. Okay, and then we're gonna add this, um, yeah, I, I want a little bit more juice in this, but I'm gonna add some water. If you were using coconut milk, you don't have to do this. Okay, just use more of the coconut milk, because I'm using coconut cream. Um, this is quite thick and pasty, okay? So we've got that. And we're going to add, what are we going to add? We're going to add some either lemon juice, lime juice, or some tamarind paste. I'm going to use tamarind. So tamarind or lemon juice, lime juice produces the sourness. So we're going to produce a balance of a, well, essentially savory, slightly sour, and slightly sweet sauce here, okay? Okay, so I've got a little bit of tamarind in here. Let's cook this up, adjust the seasoning. Okay, 
tastes interesting. It's getting there. This isn't an outright sweet and sour thing, all right? This is just to kind of like give it a little bit of a, 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 a blend of flavors as opposed to being just straight out salty. Because if you can imagine, if this were just the onion, garlic and salt and a little bit of sugar, it's going to be actually a little bit boring. So that's why I'm adding some lemongrass and some tamarind as well, just to give a little bit more of a contrast in flavors, okay? Okay, let's have a look at this. If you've got any questions at all, hit me up and I will answer them during the week, okay? But like I said, guys, if you've just joined me, uh, if you want the recipes, go to that link, bit.ly slash Jackie M. Cook Along, all one word, all lowercase, and Jackie spelled J-A-C-K-I-E. Um, if I had a dollar for every time someone spelled my name wrong, <laughs> uh, J-A-C-K-I-E-M, uh, Cook Along, right? You will be added to my list, and I will send you a copy of the recipe during the week, okay? Like I say, it's up to you how far along you want to cook this, okay? A lot of Malaysian chefs, they just cook it halfway through so that they, it doesn't spend as long on the grill as you need it to, or they cook it three quarters of the way through so they spend even less time on the grill. I'm just cooking it all the way through, okay? But again, it's a little bit arbitrary. But let's just bring this up to a simmer again. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to start heating up some oil because I want to show you, like I said, as an option, okay? When I used to sell ayam goreng, which is fried chicken, remember ayam is chicken, goreng is fried, ayam goreng is fried chicken, okay? <laughs> ayam bakar is grilled chicken, okay? This is ayam perchik, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> but yeah, ayam, ayam goreng, fried chicken that I used to sell at my restaurant, I used to actually pre-boil pre, pre it as well, okay? So I would simmer it in spices that are not too dissimilar to this, okay? It's got a few other things happening in there, including curry powder, okay? So if you want to attempt making uh, fried chicken at home, what we've put in here, plus some Malaysian curry powder, I have to stress Malaysian because um, <laughs> you don't appreciate the difference between all these different curry powders on different countries until you... Um, until you attempt a Malaysian recipe using a non-Malaysian curry powder, <laughs> all right? Add some Malaysian curry powder in there. Add some lemongrass in there. Um, I used to have galangal in there. So, so a lot of things happening in that marinade. I would boil the chicken in, in with the marinade and then I would let it actually, you know, honestly, let it uh, sit in the marinade overnight in the cool room. And then the next day I'll, 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 I'll pull off the chicken and then drench it with some flour and we use a combination of rice flour and tapioca flour. We don't use plain flour, okay? So great for people who are averse to gluten, all right? And then we flash fry it just for a couple of minutes and voila, that's your fried chicken. So you can do that, okay? So today the spice mix is a little bit simpler, but it will produce the same effect if you do, in fact, choose to deep fry these chicken pieces, okay? Okay, so this is perfect, it's done, okay, we're just going to move this aside and let's heat up some oil, like I said, for the fry, oops, that must be noisy, I think I just bumped the microphone, sorry about that guys, okay, let's heat up this oil here, move this away, And obviously you can skip this step, I'm just showing you how to deep fry chicken, okay? Use the right oil, okay, it doesn't matter. Linda, how are you? I'm watching from your hometown. Oh, what's Roman? Yay! <laughs> 
Hey, how are you? We're watching. Oh, hey, David, how you doing? Way behind. If I use fresh lemongrass, how much do I need? Should I use a blender? Ideally, yes, use a blender. Um, but you don't necessarily need it, especially if you're doing it the way we're doing. Um, just simmer it with the. If you blend it to a paste, it will produce more flavor. But you can just throw it in whole anyway, and then just let it gently emit the seasoning, the flavor into the rest of your chicken okay so we're simmering simmering Marla my parents lived in Kelantan for oh nice very cool I gotta say guys Kelantan is very unique it's not very touristy because it's very it's actually a conservative Muslim state right it's the most conservative state in Malaysia the state government is a conservative Islamic party they don't have movie theaters they don't have television. When I went over there, um, they hadn't had television for 20 years. And they mistook me for this famous Malaysian pop star who had blonde hair because they hadn't seen her for 20 years on television. And then when I showed up, they thought, oh, that's Anita Sarawak. Um, so <laughs> it was a little bit exciting. But the people are the most friendly I've met anywhere in Malaysia. So it's very, it's, it's like a bit of a contrast. It's interesting, right? And the other thing about Kelantan is that it's like 95% Malay Muslim and I'm Chinese, right? And the Chinese in Kelantan, they speak better Malay than a lot of Malays who don't live in Kelantan. It's really quite, quite interesting. You have to understand the cultural nuances of Malaysia and um, you know the ethnic mixes and all that sort of stuff to really appreciate what I'm saying here but I was quite shocked um, but because they're so conservative I didn't know I was I went there as an Australian because I've lived in Australia for 35 years now I went there as an Australian and I didn't realize but the men don't shake hands with women <laughs> so I had a couple of awkward moments there when I uh, <laughs> when I tried to shake hands with some Kalantan VIPs. All right, so the chicken spoiled. Let's turn this off and we are going to move this away. Okay, you can see it. We're heating up some oil over here. Let's, I think, let's switch this around. Okay. Okay. And that's what happens. It's uh, the safety features of my stove kick in, and they think uh, everything should shut down. So it's shut down my my stove top now. Let's just while well, we can just kind of Switch this over here. Have this chicken over here. Let's turn this back on. See what will let me. Okay. But yeah, I went to this uh, Kalantani's traditional musical performance. Oops, turn it off again. Conservative musical performance. And the performers are all male. <laughs> okay, so got this back on. Got the chicken, it's done. Let's pull the chicken out. Okay, so this is what they look like. And like I said, ideally, if you have time, let it sit in the uh, juices overnight, right? because it will help it soak up all the flavor. But we are fast tracking all of this. So I'm taking it out. It's still a bit wet. It's going to be a little bit problematic when you fry it. Okay, that's why we're gonna drench it in some oil. We're gonna use a combination of tapioca starch and rice flour, okay? Um, but don't worry about that if you're not planning to deep fry it. But let's bring this over. Okay, so there's my dinky little 
for real. <laughs> okay, let's heat this up. I'm gonna... Michael, how are you? I used to hang out in Kotabaru and nick over to Naro. Oh, wow. The train trip up through Kalan. Is that right? I did not know that. Michael, we gotta talk. <laughs> <laughs> By the way guys, Michael is a, one of my community members of my Malaysian Street Food Academy. If you actually want to learn uh, structured Malaysian and uh, Singaporean street food coaching from me, you can join my Malaysian Street Food Academy, which is a monthly subscription. It's, it costs next to nothing and it just helps me to be able to produce content. And what you get is you get access to my Malaysian Cooking Essentials course. There's over 50 videos and recipes that you can watch and learn how to cook Malaysian food from start to finish. And then you're part of my Malaysian Street Food Academy Facebook group, which is the paid community. It's exclusive. The kitchen is free. The group is paid okay so i've seen a few of you actually try to access the group no that's actually a paid community and in there you get to interact with your fellow students and also you get to post all your malaysian cooking questions <coughs> I'm losing my voice now you get to post all your malaysian cooking questions and then once a week i hop into that group and i do a live q a i answer your questions and a lot of time it actually involves me doing yet another cooking video uh, cooking demonstration so you get even more content to add to your repertoire and then once a month i do a malaysian cooking masterclass these masterclasses i used to charge hundreds of dollars for groups of 20 or 30 per person hundreds of dollars per person to learn in these masterclasses you get to learn uh, from me online obviously in these master classes for free once a month okay so these are long form videos i'll show you from start to finish how to prepare a, an iconic malaysian hawker dish as uh, the way i would approach it as a professional cook and as a restaurant owner okay so if you're interested go and check out bit.ly slash jackie and food all lowercase or just message me and i'll tell you a bit more about it okay um and then on top of that you get access to my bonus asian ingredients library which has over 40 videos and i keep adding more to it as well and all that all they are they're just me on camera talking to you about specific asian ingredients how to use them where to buy them uh, what do you do if you can't find them do you replace it with something else how would that turn out can you make it yourself at home all that kind of stuff all right so if you're interested in supporting me and supporting the malaysian street food academy then go and sign up for that like i said it's a next to nothing it costs more i, I see other people charge for online coaching and one lesson will will pay for several months of my malaysian street food academy right because uh my i've kept this really really kind of like entry level price and again you're learning from someone who actually runs uh, a malaysian food business has been for, for for decades in australia okay so i'm not just some fly-by-night operator here okay let's just oil this a little bit quite a bad the pilot can't travel to Kalantan three times now people see ah see gay I know right it's unique isn't it it's not touristy it's not kind of like chintzy it is what it is but the people are the most friendly I've met anywhere around the world okay so we're grilling this okay and if you've got like a, an oven grill, perfect. But what you want to do, remember that sauce you made. You want to baste it with the sauce, okay? So Kalantan, I think, is the sort of place you would go if you're just like so cynical of like overly touristy kind of places. Kelantan is so incredibly rustic and so like, you know, so unique. And the unique thing about uh, Kelantan as well, so I just remembered, uh, for whatever reason, I, I kind of like, someone theorized the reason, but Kelantanese women are the most entrepreneurial of the Malay people in Malaysia, right? So you'll see a lot of business business owners who are actually women. The women folk run businesses in Kelantan and when they move to Kuala Lumpur and other parts of Malaysia, 
for opportunities. It's always the women who start up the businesses. So I find that really inspiring. And in fact, when I was in Kalanta, I went to visit this uh, homestay, kind of like a, a retreat sort of thing. And it was run by this woman who, like me, had a uh, Down syndrome son. And not only did she start up a business in spite of, she started up an entire retreat with a, an attached restaurant and whatever, as a mom of a special needs kid, she named the place after him. So it's called Min House Camp, M-I-N, that's his name. So if ever you're in that part of the world, look up Min House Camp, and the food is amazing. And she's so, she's so incredibly like, you know, inspiring and like, you know, real gung-ho kind of woman. I, lo I love meeting all these people. Okay, so because your chicken's already cooked through, that's really all you need to do with this. All right, let's just take this off and I'll serve it up. Let me just get a plate. And typically, you have laid on more sauce over this, okay? And voila. Okay? Is that easy, right? So like I said, doing it this way means you don't stress out about whether the chicken's cooked through or whatever. You've already boiled it in with the spice marinade, okay? And same thing when you're doing fried chicken. Okay, just give me a second. And don't forget, stick around. We're going to talk a little bit more about the giveaway, okay? I, 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 just, I did have a chance to actually get back to the company because they wanted some information about what I was going to be making and I was like, you think I really planned that far ahead? Um, so I do need to get back to them, but uh, in principle, they've agreed to give away to my audience. And I want to stick some criteria to this, guys. I, I want to, for us, from our from our end, I want us to hit 10,000 views per video, okay? We're not, I recommend it, thanks. Oh, see, there you go, Michael, in spite of his uh, high standards. Michael recommends my course, voila. All right, so we got the chicken. Ideally, you want it a little bit drier. So let's maybe get some paper towels around this a little bit. I mean, my course, my Malaysian Street Food Academy is so cheap, that people think that all they get is a, the Q&A. No, you get everything. You get my uh, 50 plus videos on Malaysian cooking. You get my Q&As, you get all my cooking demonstrations, you get all the bonus content, you get the Asian ingredients library. And most importantly, like I said, once a month, you get a masterclass with me, yours truly, showing you how to prepare the dish from start to finish professionally, okay? Professional quality Malaysian cooking. Okay. <coughs> So we got this. Um, if you were frying, like if you're doing full-on fried chicken, like I said, if you've got some additional spices, throw it in. You know, whatever it is you've got in the fridge, in the pantry, it'd be nice. Um, but right now, as it is, it's adequate. Okay, so we've dried it a little bit. We're gonna add some tapioca starch first. Tapioca starch helps to soak up the, 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 the any any lingering moisture. Okay. Let me put a glove on. So we've got the oil going. So do you want the oil about 180 degrees? Uh, let's toss this around. So Lena, thought you're going to use your full size barbecue unit. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I should use that as a giveaway. My God. Um, <laughs> yeah, Selena, thanks for reminding. It's been sitting on my balcony for like how long ago since I got sent. I got sent a barbecue unit by barbecues galore and i used it <laughs> like 
for to shoot some videos for them and then it's just been sitting on my balcony because apparently I don't, I don't have any friends to invite over for a barbecue I don't want I don't want people coming to disrupt my life okay so we've coated this with some tapioca starch and we are going to toss in some rice flour okay rice flour gives it the crunchiness okay tapioca starch generally okay you use tapioca starch to help things stick together okay and help it to absorb moisture and rice flour to give it that crunchiness okay so you see a lot of asian uh, asian recipes when they call for flowers they tend to use a combination of different ones this kind of is the reason why okay so we've got the oil going okay like i said hopefully this is not too juicy still like i said typically you would want to actually just drain this out a little bit better but this is just literally just come out of the pot of simmering spice mix okay okay it might spit <laughs> let's turn this down a little bit essentially rather than those thin walks okay so by and large you know when you talk about walks the two types that i would get one would be the thin walk the iron walk the cheapo iron walk that you get at asian grocery stores that's for stir frying okay that's when you want to generate really high heat you want to be able to toss your meat your, your noodles or your vegetables very quickly and squash them okay these ones are for braising okay this one this is a stone walk that i bought in some asian like Korean grocery store or something like that, right? This is for deep frying and it's great. Also for cooking curries and stuff, okay? So let's turn this off, this is in a plate. Okay, again, so just flash frying it for what? Less than five minutes, voila fried chicken and it's already cooked through right okay so you don't worry about it being raw undercooked or whatever and you don't worry about having to basically stress about cooking for too long and drying it out essentially okay so you've got this and you've got the ayam perchik that's grilled 
Um, so that's it. Easy enough, right? What do you think? You're going to give it a go. Let me know how it turns out. So let's talk a little bit about this appliance that we are going to be using as our giveaway. Okay, like I said, I still need to nail down the final details with the company um, because it is an international company, but I needed to know the parameters insofar as where they will ship it, okay? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they will be able to ship this around the world. The question is whether it's been released internationally across all countries, okay? But you can see, oh, you can't. Let me just move this. Where are we? Okay. okay I don't want to move this too much because I've got a lot of stuff happening over here. Okay. Can you see this? Okay. Okay, so this looks, everybody looks at it and say, oh, that's a Thermomix. Okay, it's not a Thermomix, it's like a Thermomix. It does the same thing. So it does the blending, the pureeing, the, you can make, uh, you, you can cook rice in it, you can cook curries in it if you so want. You can cook kaya, it's fantastic because it's temperature controlled. So what it does is that you can steam in it, you can mix dough and whipped cream and whatever else. So this is it here. And I believe it retails, it's on like, it's on a, okay, I'm just, I'm trying to kind of like avoid having to unplug this, but let's do it. Okay, voila, so this is it, this is my new baby. <laughs> My new baby is the Thermocook Pro M. Okay, so this is the M model, it's the latest. It was sent out to me, it's about two weeks ago now. And uh, the company is going to send one of these to one of you guys to tune in. I want to hit, like I said, guys, what did I say, 10,000 views? Um, so please uh, help me along and share this out and sign up. Uh, the, P the person who's going to win is going to be drawn from my list that uh, you have to sign up for, okay? Because otherwise, how am I supposed to pick the winner? So sign up for my cook-along recipes and giveaways. The link at the bottom, bit.ly slash Jackie M cook-along, all one word, all lowercase. And I will pick a winner from that uh, once I've nailed down further details from the company as to, you know, primarily I'm concerned about the geographical locations, especially with this shutdown and whatever else, you know, all the interruptions, you know, where are they, you know? where would they be willing to send us okay so we are going to pick a winner among you guys to win one of these things and this, this uh like i said from memory it costs well i know it costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that quite me i haven't really checked it out uh for the barbecue you need to teach now how to barbecue me in aussie <laughs> yeah that too <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> yeah david let report back let us know how, how it turns out what would you serve it with, Amy? We would serve it with rice. <laughs> Everything goes well with rice. You know what would go really well? Is, uh, sticky rice, I, in my opinion, would go really well with this chicken dish. But yeah, rice, salad, and also, um, yeah, rice and salad, like lettuce, uh, tomato, cucumber sort of thing. But in Malaysia, a lot of the stuff that we serve, we serve it sliced cucumber, which I think some Westerners find a little bit weird, but to us, that's second nature right so give this a go like i said this should taste this should taste slightly sour slightly sweet and coconut creamy and a little bit spicy if you add chili to it and you base this on your chicken and let's show it to everyone again so i am for chick barbecue chicken and this is your i am goreng fried chicken okay thanks again so much for joining me guys don't forget to share this around so that everyone can catch my broadcast and we hit 10,000 views um and then we're going to do a giveaway uh sometime in the next four weeks okay so make sure you sign up to my email list and somebody from that list will will will, 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 will win one of these courtesy of the company uh which is fruity f-r-o-o-t-h-i-e and like I said, uh, I've gone ahead and kind of announced it, but I know that they're very keen for me to do this. Um, so you might see if, uh, my Thermo Cook Pro M show up in some of my upcoming broadcasts over the next couple of weeks. Okay, thanks again so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll have a new recipe and all that. And um, yeah, have a great weekend. Ciao.